So in the last video, we introduced the Moivre's theorem and we talked about how it can be applied to finding powers of complex numbers such as this one. So we solved this one and we found that this was equal to minus 4 minus 4i. And that's a really interesting thing because by application of the Moivre's theorem, you can find the powers of any complex number as long as you represent it in polar form first because remember when you raise an exponential to another power you simply multiply the power so that basically makes it a lot simple that simplifies the problem of expanding this out using the binomial theorem and we're in this video what we're going to do is we're going to apply the Moivre theorem to finding identities for trigonometric functions so what I mean by that is let's say we're interested in finding um, an expression for cosine squared or theta in terms of something else we want to reduce this to a power of one somehow by using relations between trigonometric functions so what are we going to do well the best thing we can do is we can write cosine of theta plus i sine of theta squared and the reason I am doing this is because what I want to do, what I want to achieve with this, is I want to extract that cosine square from there. Similarly, if I had cosine to the power of 3 theta and I was interested in an expression in terms of that, what I would do is I would cube the whole expression because remember this is just e to the i theta here. So this is this part of the Moivre theorem and this is going to be the right hand side. It's going to be cosine of 2 theta plus i sine 2 theta so now what we do is we're going to expand this side so this is going to become cosine squared theta plus 2i sine theta cosine theta plus i squared is going to become minus and this is going to be sine squared theta and this is going to be the same So we're going to have cosine 2 theta here, and we're going to have i sine 2 theta. So what we're, what we're going to do now is we're going to group all the terms that belong to the real part. So this is going to be part of the real part on this side, because those are the numbers that do not have the imaginary unit attached to them. And on this side, we only have this as the real part. So we're going to make this equal to that. And then the imaginary part is going to be equal to the imaginary part on this side. So we can work this out by writing cosine square, sorry, cosine square theta equals to cosine 2 theta minus sine. Sorry, this should be plus because I have moved this to the other side. So that's going to be this expression right here. Now, we have reduced this, but you notice that there's a little problem with this expression, and it is that we now have a square trigonometric function that is dependent upon another square trigonometric function. And this is not going to be particularly useful, because what we're interested in is in a, uh, a function that is to the power of 1. Because if we wanted to integrate this function, we would get the following expansion, and then how do we integrate this function? We're going to keep going back and forth with this. So... What can we do? Well, we use the trigonometric identity sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals to 1. And now we're going to express sine squared theta in terms of this. So we're going to use this simple trigonometric identity to rearrange terms here. So this is going to be the same as cosine squared theta equals to cosine 2 theta plus 1 minus cosine squared theta and then if we move this to the other side that gives us 2 and finally we have our expression that has been reduced to a trigonomet trigonometric function to the power of 1 so this is going to be half this is going to be half plus half cosine 2 theta and you might have seen this expression before because it is used very often for substitution into an integral. If you're integrating a function like this, you use this substitution because you know that a function like this, you can integrate directly. It's very easy. You just divide this constant by this uh, constant attached to the 
actual variable and then this is just going to become 1 over 2 theta so that's going to be a very easy integration to perform and the interesting thing is that from this same expression we can actually get another expression for um, for sine square theta and you might think well why don't we use why don't we use the imaginary part instead to extract sine square theta and the reason for that is that it is going to require us to use another trigonometric identity and because we are not very good at remembering trigonometric identities we're not going to use it but if I wanted to write the imaginary part I would do the following I would say sine 2 theta equals to 2 sine theta cosine theta but hang on a minute that's another trigonometric identity that you may have seen so that's the double angle formula so that's a really interesting thing from this very simple expansion of the Moivre's theorem we got two trigonometric identities we got one expression for cosine square theta and we got another expression for the double angle of a sine of a function so that's a really interesting thing but that's not sine square theta we want this expression so what can we do well the best thing we can do is we can rearrange this so that's going to be cosine square theta minus cosine 2 theta and now we use the same trigonometric identity once, once again this is going to be 1 minus sine squared theta minus cosine 2 theta and finally when we get to the final part we move this to the other side and then we divide both sides by 2 and that gives us the identity 1 over 2 minus 1 over 2 cosine 2 theta and this is the reason why if you have seen this expression before it is exactly the same as this one but the only difference is that the sign is inverted so that's how you derive that and you can apply this here into basically finding expressions for any other uh, power of a trigonometric function that you want of course that's going to become quite tedious because in that case you would actually need a to perform that kind of um, binomial theorem expansion because what you want is you want an expression that is explicit in terms of this so it, it's kind of pointless to represent this as a polar form complex number but this is just one of, to illustrate another application of the Moivre theorem and why it is so important and this kind of thing is actually quite useful for um, applications in integration and calculus as well and in the next video we're going to learn how to apply a similar concept to the Moivre's theorem but to find in the roots of a complex number instead.